I was very keen when uh, Jane mentioned this idea to me because I've been trying to uh, write something about this. And in a way, I owe this to a meeting that I was at with, with Jane. So it was under the auspices of Pugwash. It was a meeting. It had to be on a Saturday, and the forum was accessible on the Saturday, so we held it there, although it wasn't really a forum meeting. And in response to Jane, I said something about the fact-value distinction, uh, and then I thought, actually, that kind of works. And I've been trying to work on this ever since. So this is a paper I've been uh, trying to prepare. So when you said, you know, come and talk about this, I'm not going to give the whole paper, obviously, but it, just this is the, the centre bit of it. So here's a bit of evidence. One of the things that I'm interested in is more or less precisely the same thing as, as Jane was saying about the way in which um, you know, there's this strong feeling that these questions call for ethical responses. And I think this quote, very well known uh, um, book by uh, Ian Wilmot, where he sets out, it's called The Second Creation, Dolly and the Age of Biological Control. So he says, you know, he, set, he sets out in the book the sort of things we can do as a result of cloning. Uh, and he says, but the question remains of what we should do. And this, um, so he, and this is the way he actually says it. Until the birth of Dolly, scientists were apt to declare that this or that procedure would be biologically impossible. But now that expression, biologically impossible, seems to have lost all meaning. We can do anything we like. Uh, in the 21st century and beyond, human ambition will be bound only by the laws of physics, the rules of logic, and our descendants' own sense of right and wrong. So, that, you know, so you've got three things. There's what stuff is there. There's the rules of logic that allow you to move the stuff around. Uh, and our descendants' own sense of right and wrong. Truly, Dolly has taken us into the age of biological control. So uh, what I'm kind of interested in here and obviously this is, um, this is what's on the piece of paper there, um, th there's a sense in which, you know, there is a philosophical tradition in which this is the case, but Wilmer is actually sort of performing this. He's saying, well, there's science that tells you what is possible, and then there's ethics, or our descendants' sense of right and wrong, which I guess is a sort of slightly empirical way of saying uh, ethics. Um, but you've got these two things. Um, you know, there's the, the question of what we can do and what we should do. Now, what I'm kind of interested in is how this is or dualism, so that what we should and what we can, what's a fact and what's a value, what is an is and what is an ought, uh, actually, I think, is, isn't just something they refer to, but it's something that they do work with. And that really, here are the three points that... What this dualism does, as far as I can see, is it partitions authority. So it says, well, there's some complicated stuff going on here, but essentially it's about the stuff to do with what is possible, what the facts are, and we scientists will do that, thank you. And then there's the stuff about, well, sh what should we do with it? And that's for you ethics guys, or ethics people, persons, uh, to do. Now, so that partitions the world and says, you know, this question can be answered by those two kinds of expertise. Now, I think that goes to some of the things that Jane was saying about, well, why do people tend to cast us as bioethicists? Well, we, we, we're not the scientists, so we must be the other thing, okay? Um, not necessarily that's a bad thing. I mean, you know, I, I'm not being snide about that, but th that's the conception of what the other is. If it's not science, it's what it ought to be. But I also think, and everybody's second favourite theorist is obviously Giddens, so um, Giddens you know, has this idea about structuration, so the way in which institutions reproduce themselves. And one of the things that I, th I think is interesting about this is, sure, is the way this structurates, in the sense that every time, you know, every time Wilmer says this, then he reproduces and revalidates that distinction. Because you know, he says that there are only three things. Well, there are only two, really, because logic and you can't do physics without logic conceivably. Uh, so there are kind of two. There's, there's, there's the, you know, the real world stuff and then what we ought to do. And I think the final thing that this does is to indicate that between them, science and ethics exhaust all the knowledge that is relevant to the assessment of these kind of questions. So within the philosophical tradition, of course, they, they, uh, they acknowledge other kinds of knowing. So aesthetics, for example, is another kind of knowing, but it's not particularly relevant here. So all the things that are relevant to this are either science or their ethics. And so what I'm trying to do in, in the paper is you know, to, to bring out this structuration uh, aspect. 
Uh, and then finally, the last thing that I try to do in the paper is to say, even within its own terms, this doesn't work out. Uh, and you know, so this is a kind of STS point that not all of the things that science wants to treat as is-is are actually factual all the way through. Often you have to make some kind of methodological assumptions, which you can't really test, but they're just the precondition. You know, this is a very sort of Sheila Jasnoff kind of point. Um, and I elaborate that, and then I try to do the same thing for the ethics. That's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>